Hey folks, hey, what's going on? Hey, this is Wesley Virgin. And guys, this is another episode of Ask a Millionaire. My name is Wesley Virgin. And yes, I'm a multi-millionaire. I'm a master motivator. I'm a master trainer. But I'm also a purpose, a person that has a purpose to help other people to become successful, to become wealthy, to become happy, um, healthy, and really uh, become the person that I believe that we all should become, you know, um, happy people, people that can be great. And tonight's session, and you know, feel free to ask your questions below. If you just popped into the room until my chat here, please leave below, say I'm here. And don't forget to always leave a like and a share because this is some good information, information from my journey in becoming a million. And I want to share it with you because um, a lot of people believe this journey is a race, but it's a marathon. Even though I make it look easy, guys, it's not easy in the beginning because it's a lot of transforming that you, that, oh, what's up, Sean? What's going on? But hey, I'm rocking with you as too, my friend. Thanks for the like. Thanks for the share as well. Now, tonight, um, briefly, I want to talk about something that's very important, um, especially when you're trying to uh, make a lot of money or when you're trying to really become the person to attract what you truly desire. And what's up, Al? What's up, baby? Al Salas. What's going on? Um, it's about focusing on the one thing. Uh, there's a book out there that was written by Keller Williams. Keller Williams is a huge real estate company, probably one of the largest in the world. But I think the hardest thing for a person to do is focus on that one thing. And I want you to think about right now. Think about the ideal or something that you're working on. Now, let me ask you a question. How many times have someone told you that you should be doing this or hey let me give you this idea or it will be great if you were doing this as well right and even though those may be great ideas right um, it would distract you from that one thing that you need to focus on right because unfortunately in this world it's full of distraction even on Facebook right and I email someone's given us an opportunity to make money you know on the Facebook we see a new diet or we see a new meal or we see someone that has the life that we want and it's very difficult sometimes to be focused on the one thing and now what I want to do here tonight real briefly before I ask questions remember this is for me to answer your question this is for me to answer the public questions people around the world that may have because um, a lot of people don't get access to a multimillionaire when I was growing up I didn't get access to a multimillionaire right you know my parents were not rich at all uh, you know, they worked hard. It was great. They're pastors of churches, but they wasn't fortunate enough to have riches of mi millions of dollars. And since I, I, I was, you know, able to do that uh, through hard work and dedication, um, I want to pay that forward to you. So let me give you a couple of tools. How to stay focused. And it's going to be some simple stuff. You know, guys, this is not, um, you know, this is not algebra. It's not hard. It's very simple stuff that you, that you already know how to do. One thing is stay away from Facebook, guys. Now, if you're on Facebook watching my videos or watching something or another video that's going to empower you, that's going to educate you, or you're following someone that you would like to become, it's okay. But if you're scrolling through Facebook looking at people's problems, watching people um, do crazy, stupid stuff, you know, watching other videos, you know, looking at your girlfriend's or your boyfriend's page and looking at what your friend's doing. And, you know, if you're spending your time doing this, then you're wasting time. If you're spending your time on Instagram, just searching through. Because what I've learned is all of us as people, the one emotion that we hate most is to be bored. That's the only reason why we get on the phone, we scroll through Snapchat. We scroll through Instagram, we scroll through Facebook because we're bored. Like you probably at work doing it, you probably at home right now doing it. But we forget that even those things, it's not only sucking up our time, but it starts to create our reality. Like we may see things going wrong in the world. We may see, you know, Kanye West doing something to Kim Kardashian. We see Donald Trump, you know, 
talking about black people, Mexican people, I don't know. And it starts a conversation, but unfortunately, that situation is not going to get you closer to your goal. Guys, stay away from social network if you're not using it as a platform, one, to create wealth, or two, to learn how to be wealthy, or to learn how to be a better person. You have to learn how to focus on one thing, okay? If you have a business idea and you're working on, that's all you should be dealing with, right? Let me give you an example. Right now, if you if your desire is to be in the internet business, right? I always talk about this because I love it. If your desire to be in the internet business, online, right? Amazon, eBay, Facebook, Instagram, you got many people making money on these platforms, then you should only be associating with those people that do that thing very well. Only. Only. Does it make sense? When I was starting my business, I can only focus on one thing, one product. I will only hang around people that were doing well in my field. I wasn't going out to the club. You know, people used to ask me, say, Wesley, do you rest? Do you have fun? Do you go out? Sometimes you got to go out. No. No. Until you. Now, see, now I understand this. Everybody doesn't want to be rich. But I think the 18 people on here want to be financially stable. They want to be wealthy. And for you, in my opinion, to which a high level of life, you have to have the ability to focus on one thing. This is how you have to get away from distractions. You can't pick up your phone all the time when someone texts you. Someone calls you on the phone. Turn the phone off, guys. You have to have a time in the day that you cut yourself off from the outside world. Okay? You got to find 20 or an hour where you can be absolutely, completely focused on your dream. Because if you don't do this, if you can't focus properly, if you allow people to seduce you or persuade you back and forth from ideal to ideal, from thing to thing, you'll never get what you truly want. And I'm saying this from the heart. You'll never get it. You'll, you'll, you'll be this person say, oh, this year's my year. Oh, you know what? This is New Year's. This is my New Year's resolution. You'll be that person saying it every single year. Oh, some great things going to happen this year. This is going to be my year. You'll be that person saying that every single year. Not knowing that you're caught up in a spiral, in my opinion, of failure. And until you break this pattern by focusing on one thing and separating yourself from social media... If it's not giving you anything from an educational standpoint or giving you some information to build your business, then you're doing something wrong. Number two, stay away from the TV. Yeah. Guys, even though now that I'm a multimillionaire, the only TV that I watch is Shark Tank. I watch um, Billionaire Buyer. That's uh, Mr. Tillman. Um, I watch... Um, What's the other uh, show? Uh, oh, Undercover Bosses. I only watch shows. You're gonna find out in life, you know, when you start to um, seek greatness in life, and this is what I'm seeking every day to be greater than who I was yesterday. Some things you don't want to watch. Some things you don't want to subdue yourself to. Right? I don't watch news. I don't listen to negative messages. I don't listen to how bad the world is. Because in the same world, I believe it's a great world. Because sometimes you, you'll see negative, right? You see people killing, um, you know, you see people killing each other, raping each other, um, racist, politics. How can you focus on your dream when you have all that junk in your mind? How? Stay away from TV. Stay away from radio and music that's not empowering. And I know this is a big one. Some people say, oh, I need my radio. I need my music. This just gives me so much joy. But what you don't understand, that the music and the words of that music 
if it's not empowering, it's moving you in the wrong direction. But guess what? It's so assiduous. And assiduous means this. You don't even see it coming. See, the person that gains weight, all right, no one comes out the room fat, overweight. But after 10 years of making small, small, very bad decisions, one day creates this obesity, this huge body, these love handles, right? Slowly. It's a slow process, right? A cake here, a soda water here, a coffee here, a honey bun here. It's the same thing when you're trying to be wealthy. See, you watch a show here, Love and Hip Hop, reality shows, Kim Kardashian, it's a piece of music here, something that's negative, you know, talking about pussy and bitches and hoes. That's, you know, rap music or music that's definitely not stimulating your mind in the direction of your goal. Listen to me. It's always the small things that always moves us off track, that keeps us from focusing on the dream and the desire that we want so much. Because some of us, we want it so bad, you know, some of, some of us... Some of you guys that's watching the video, you want to leave your job so bad, don't you? You're like, Wesley, if it's a way, I just want to leave my job. Just talking to this guy today. He said he's so stressed out. He's so stressed. And he feels he just can't leave his job, but he wants to. And he tells me every day, man, I'm getting closer every day to leave my job. But he's been saying that for the last six months. It's like a stronghold. But what you don't understand... It's the stress from your job or from a situation that you don't want to be in that pulls at your heart. Right? It slows down the blood flow to your main arteries. It creates cortisol in your body and it gets worse and worse. And what I'm telling you here is to become wealthy, to become rich, no, it's not easy, but it's very possible. But one thing you got to focus, guys, you got to get away from social media. You can't spend so much time on that. When you're bored, read a book. When you're bored, work on your dream. Get away from the TV. Take up 30 days, 30 days of your life. You, you, you can't believe what would happen if you pull the TV, the radio, negative voices, crazy friends like Pookie and Ray Ray always telling you the bad news. Someone called me the other day. They said... Did you see that lemonade thing that Beyonce did? And I'm asking her a question. I think Daisy cheated on her. I don't know. But I said, let me ask you a question. Why do you think I want to hear that? Why, why do you think I want to hear about Beyonce and Jay-Z? They need to hear about Wesley Virgin. Why, why do I want to spend a moment of my time listening about other people's problems? Why? How is that making me a better person? How's that allowing me to contribute to other people? How's that making me money? How's that improving my health? It's not. It's a time consumer. It's something that we can talk about, but at the end of the day, it is meaningless. It's futile. Guys, pay attention to your time. Pay attention on how you use your time. Pay attention to who is using up your time. Focus, focus on one thing. Get that book by Keller Williams, a great book. It's called the, that, the One Thing. And what he talks about is how he focused on the most important thing in his business. All right, the most important thing. Think in your business right now. What is the most important thing, I believe, is getting a customer. Because a customer equates to money. Most of you guys work on your website. Oh, let me work on my website. Oh, let me make my website better. Are you kidding me? Oh, let me give me a building. Let me change the sign. Let me change the programs. Let me change the, uh, the brochures. I mean, the things that don't even make sense. If you have a business or you want to start a business, your main focus should be, what is it going to take for me to get a customer? That's it. That's it. What's it going to take for me to make my first dollar in my business? It's not all about the websites and your business cards. I see people 
Oh yeah, I got a double-sided business card. Oh, I have a metal business card. I, I, I can't remember when a business card made me money. I don't really don't carry business cards. <clears throat> Even though I have them, but I don't carry them. I think they're a waste of paper. Okay? Focus on the thing that's most important. If you have an ideal, focus on that ideal. Don't let anyone give you other ideals or other enhancements to make your ideal better. No. Say, hey, thank you, but no thank you. I'm focused on this one thing right now. That's it. If you're in the lipstick business, focus on lipstick. Don't go to eyebrows. Oh, I can make money on eyebrows too. Oh, I can make money doing women's um, eyelids and eyelashes too. No, focus on lips. If you're in the internet business and you want to make money by on eBay, well, stay on eBay. Don't go to Facebook and go to Google and no, no, stay on eBay. Perfect that first. Don't begin something. I know people right now. They say, "Oh, I got a store in Houston. I'm thinking about doing a store in North Carolina." When that store in Houston is not profiting any money, why would you do that? Focus on one thing and the scary part is this you're not sure if it's going to work out that's the scary part see a lot of people want to have plan a plan b plan c and it's only because they're afraid to fail it's only because they're afraid that plan a is not going to work but you got to have faith in plan a you got to have belief in plan a and you have to burn the bridges because see if you have plan b and plan c that distracts from plan a you know how people say, oh, you got to put your eggs in different baskets. That's a lie. You put your eggs in one basket. Okay? One basket. If I'm planting a tree, if I have seeds, I'm not going to plant my seeds in different grounds all over the place. I'm going to plant it in one. Because the likelihood of I'm putting six seeds in one area under that soil it's a more likely chance it's going to grow unless I put a seed here, put a seed here, put a seed here, put a seed here. Because I understand just because I plant a seed, one seed, it doesn't mean it's going to grow. But if I plant six or seven and I take care of that, one of those seeds is going to work for me. So guys, at this time I want to answer questions. Any questions that you may have, I'm going to look at my laptop here. Because sometimes the questions don't come to properly. Um... Man, I had a great day today. You want to know what y'all did? Well, I worked out. I meditated. And I just got back from getting a great massage from my great, amazing massage therapist. She's amazing. And I'm feeling young. I'm feeling good. You know, I'm feeling vibrant. And I'm um, just glad to help you. So if you have questions, ask them now. It says my signal is weak. I don't know why. Hold on, guys. What's up, Ryan? What's up? Thank you, Miss Green. Thank you, Mr. Darrell Price. Think and Grow Rich during my workouts. I love it. I love it. You know, I would like to know what everybody else was doing today. You know, you know what I like to do? <clears throat> because think about it. Right now, it is um, it's April 25th. And a lot of you in January said, you know what? This year is going to be different. You said that. You said, this is going to be my year. I'm going to make some changes in my life. I'm going to eat better. I'm going to do better. I'm going to do people better. You know, I'm going to make more money. I'm going to take more risks. My question is to you, what have you done? Because, see, this year is almost halfway done. But, see, I want you. This is the only reason I keep recording these videos for the people that follow me. is because I want to see you, people out there, you're either doing two things. You're taking action or you ain't doing nothing at all. Are you doing something, you're stopping. But see, anything that you're doing is a habit. If you're that person that starts to stop, start stop, that's a habit. If you're that person that's been consistent since January, hey, kudos to you. If you're that person that haven't started, get off your butt. Stop procrastinating. Stop making excuses. Stop crying. Stop playing the blame the game. Stop being the victim. Wake up. Get to work. Because let me share with you. At the end of the day, no one has your back. 
The only person that has your back is you, my friend. You. You're the only person that have your back at the end of the day. Because you can tell your problems to everybody, want validation, want people to say, it's going to be okay, one day you'll get it. But the only person that truly cares, that should care, is yourself. You got to care about you. You got to motivate you. You got to encourage you. You got to inspire yourself. You got to do this. That's your responsibility, not mine. Not the preacher, not the pastor. No, not T.D. Jakes, Joel Osteen, not motivational speakers, not the radio show host. You are responsible for you. You're responsible to get up in the morning. You're responsible to brush your teeth, wash your butt, go to work, take your car to the, um, to the shop, right? Change the tire, take your kids to school. You are responsible for how you feel. You are responsible how you think. Take ownership. Hey, I want to ask some questions real quickly here. Give me a sec. Hey, Ryan, I got you right here, buddy. For your fitness products, did you write and record the VSL yourself? I did write the VSL myself, but that is not my voice. Um, I had a voiceover actor to record it for me, and I had somebody else to create the VSL. Okay, Ryan, uh, describe how hard you worked to get <clears throat> where you are in the past seven years. How did you deal with each failure? Each failure did you deal with the worst? Well, guys, if anybody know me, uh, <clears throat> I'm a rebellious guy. I'm hard-headed, right? I don't like listening to people. I was in the military. You know, I've never shared this, but I'm going to share this on this. I was in the military, and I got kicked out, guys. Yeah. Wesley Virgin was kicked out of the Army because Wesley Virgin didn't want to listen to anybody's direction. Okay, um, luckily I had some great people that cared about me. They gave me an honorable discharge, but they kicked me out. You know, I was going to San Antonio. I was in Fort Hood, and I was a, I think I was getting in a fight with my sergeant because uh, my sergeant was sleeping with the girl that I was talking to before. So we got upset, and you know, I was about to fight this guy, and it was crazy. But at the end of the day, they left me there and they kicked me out of the military. So one thing about me, guys, I'm a hard-headed guy. Um, I told my dad this one day, I said, Dad, I would rather go through the pain or go through the failure or the struggle than to listen to you. I told him, not those exact words, but he was trying to tell me something. He was giving me some good advice at the time, but I wanted to do it my way. And guys, there's two ways. Now, let me tell you something with you. I'm not saying just be a rebellious person in life or be this uh, person that's a hard head. But two things happen here. I went through a lot. I put myself through a lot by being this type of person. Okay, bankruptcy, repose, kicked out of my apartment. Um, uh, I was in jail for traffic tickets. Um, um, I wrote bad checks at the time. You know, I was trying to trying to eat. To be honest, uh, but I did a lot of bad things. I did a lot of things that were wrong. Um, but I believe that spirit. Of self-reliance okay now listen to me self-reliance means that I knew at the end of the day I was going to make it and anything I would do I remember I used to, have to catch the bus I had a car they repoed the car I had to catch the bus to work for two hours making ten dollars an hour every day two hours there two hours back okay but I always believe that my situation will always get better it was just a belief. And maybe I got that from my father. I don't know. He had a lot of drive. My dad had a lot of drive. And he was like that too. He was hard-headed and stubborn just like me. And, you know, and I got that from him. So what you would see as a failure, Mr. Saplin, I didn't see it as a failure. See, when I lost my job, um, and they repulled my car, so what? When I, when I had to file bankruptcy, Chapter 13, so what? Who cares? When I got kicked out the military, so what? It just didn't, it didn't affect me like it affect other people. Because I knew that I had the power of the ability to get those things again. It's all, see, in my brain, it was always a way to get what I wanted. 
Now, it took me a long time because the only thing is I had to drive, right? But the thing is, um, I was ignorant. I wasn't educated. I didn't know what I didn't know. See, I thought just by not paying my tickets on time, it'll go away, but it didn't. It took me five years to pay tickets off to Houston, Texas, a lot of tickets. You know, if you don't pay your note or you don't pay your insurance, uh, they're gonna take your vehicle. You know, I remember the time I was in my apartment and I got up, I wrote the mechanic shop a bad check because I didn't have the money, but I needed a car. Bad decision, right? I thought it was a great decision because I needed a car. They took my car. Then I was forced to file bankruptcy. I wasn't forced, I just did it because I wanted my car back, jacked up my credit, right? But it was a decision that I made. And that was just ignorance, God. I was just making bad decisions. But it never, ever, if I thought myself as a failure, never. It didn't matter how bad it got, I never thought Wesley Virgin was a failure, never. So I think that's what did it for me. See, when other people may thought, oh man, I hope Wesley get it right one day. Man, this kid needs to get it together. A lot of people used to say, oh, he's smart, but he just makes dumb decisions. He just, ah, oh, this, this kid, he's so rebellious, he don't listen. They said that about me. But at no time did I think of myself as a failure. I always had a plan. Always. Even though I was making bad decisions, but I had a plan to get out of my situation. It wasn't always the best plan. But I was self-reliant, guys. All right. Next question. Per your last video, what are some ways you can remain positive, vibrant, expecting of a great outcome when things don't seem to go in your way? Okay. So, Mr. Al Silas, this is what I do, okay? Whenever, you know, it's a time when you want to be positive or, you know, you got a negative situation, remember this. Now, you have to remember this consciously for right now. Listen to my words. Whenever something comes at you, like right now, if you go to work in the morning and your boss tells you you're fired, you're fired, get out of here, or someone calls you on the phone and they just cuss you out. I always remember this. What ask yourself this question. Al Silas, what does this mean to me? What's happening right now? This is what I learned about people. Now I want you to listen to me real quickly. When people are angry at you, it's because they're hurting. Remember that. When people are angry at you, it's because they're hurting. It's not because they want to kill you, want to beat you. No, no, no. Like when they scream at you or they say, hey, man, why did you do this? And, you know, you're not, you're not being a good this, this, that, a good husband, good boyfriend, good father. It's because they're hurting. Anger equals pain. Does that make sense? Just think about what it takes for a person to get angry. Usually when we, when we get upset, it's because someone did something to us that felt bad. It was painful. So since it was painful, now we react with anger. So you have to know this, okay? Even in life, when all this stuff happens in life, you know, we call it struggle, we call it adversity, we call it problems, all right? But it's your responsibility to put a meaning on that. And guess what? You got total control. Whatever happens to you in your life, you can put a meaning on it. If you're not making the money that you want to make right now, you can do two things. You can bitch and complain about your situations. That man, I hate this job. I can't stand this job. Oh my God, it sucks. My boss hates me. My coworkers hate me. Or I'm grateful for this job. And I know one day I'm going to be out of here and I'm going to get a, a brand new, greater opportunity. I'm grateful, thankful that I have a job to go to, that I have money that I'm making. And I know that this is just a stepping stone. See, you see what I'm doing? A lot of people just complain about that. And it's a habit. But to break it, the first thing you say, this is what I want you to do. The next negative thing that comes across your plate, anything in life, say, whatever your name is, what does this mean to me? Or what do I want this to mean to me? Anything. When someone makes a sarcastic comment, someone gets smart with you, People do it to me all the time. 
And me? Oh, I already know. Like when someone's sarcastic to me, it's because they want to make themselves feel better. And it's okay. Because I want them to feel better as well. So I say nothing. I say, oh, okay. You know when they take a cheap shot? It's okay. It's because they want themselves to feel better. Does that make sense? See, when people, let me give you an example. When I was feeding people McDonald's food, which is unhealthy, yes. People say, well, well, why didn't you feed the people fruits and vegetables? You know, you're a healthy guy. See, I am not going to respond to this. Why? That person, they made that comment. They could have did two things. They could have said, man, you know, Wesley, man, I appreciate you doing that for other people. But they chose to go the negative route. They chose to judge what I was doing based off my lifestyle. So you got to think about a person that does that. It's a person that's in pain. They're hurting about something. Does that make sense? So I don't need to respond to that. Anytime someone comes negatively or they say something to a person or to you that doesn't make you feel good, it's they're coming from a position of hurt and it's deep inside to their core. You got to know this. See, when you know this, life gets very easy. Life gets very easy, then a lot of things don't affect you anymore. It just doesn't. It just bounces off your back. So I hope I answered your question. I got a lot of questions. Hold on. Today I was coaching my staff around our purpose and principles. Good job, Chris Hurd. Good job, man. You know, one thing about my team, one thing I'm going to talk about, maybe tomorrow's thing about how to build a winning team. I got a winning team right now. And let me tell you what I do most with my team. Um, I allow them to fail. And um, I treat them real good. You know, we give them money, we give them bonuses. But one thing, I allow them to fail. Everybody that is a manager or a leader of a team, I want you to listen to me right now. You have to allow your people to fail. Because if you don't, and you put them on pins and needles, they're not going to do the best quality of work. If you don't inspire them to understand that what they're doing is bigger than a job that is a purpose for what they're doing, and if they don't know this purpose, if they think it's just a job, they're not going to give you the best. One, allow them to fail. Allow them to mess up. Correct them. Let them know what they're doing wrong. But allow them to do that. Don't put them on pins and needles, right? Don't say, oh, if you do that, I'm going to fire you. Oh, I can't believe you fucked up again. No, no, no. Allow them to fail. No one in life is going to do things perfect. Okay? And like I said, the next thing is make a contribution to them, you know, inspire them, encourage them, give them a greater purpose. Everybody in your company, they should have a greater purpose than just their job. Does it make sense? I empower all my people to one day to leave me to go build their own empire, to leave me, to build their own empire. I don't want them working for me forever. No, I want them one day to be better than me. And I'm giving them the tools and resources to it. And when you give someone the opportunity to do that, they're going to give you their best. So good job, Chris Hurd. Hey, Wes, what do you think? What's up, Paul? Much love, bro. Um, hey, Wes, what do you think about hiring people to work for you, like creating video sales letter and making tutorial videos for sale or copywriter? Of course. This is what I did. Only thing is I wrote the copy myself, but right now, I have a team that does it all for me. I don't write copy anymore. I review copy. But I have someone who writes the copy. I have... <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, I have somebody that writes the copy. I have someone that makes the affiliate pages, the emails. They do the VSL. So I have a whole team that does it all for me, okay? That's how I streamline the process. And I modeled this from one of my mentors that does this on a high level. Like, I got about three products. He has about 100 products out there. But he has a system where you can make the sales letters in a week. Everything happens real fast. Mim Win, how did you test your fat diminishing offer so it became number one? Oh, you want the secret sauce, baby. Wow, all right. Great. Okay, let me give you the secret sauce, Ms. Ms. Wynn. Listen close to me, okay? 
Listen close. This is how I became number one. I'm going to be honest with you. I talked about this on my last um, Ask a Millionaire, but check this out. And this is why I want everybody to do it. It don't matter if you're in the internet business or you're in a conventional business outside the internet, okay? For the first three years, I developed relationships with people that were doing what I wanted to do. People like Mike Geary. You don't know these people, but everybody I name right now, they're, they're, they're doing very well. There's a lot of people I look up to. A lot of people that was friends. A lot of people played a part in my success. Jim, um, John Rowley, Rowley, uh, Mike Geary, Craig Ballantyne. I know you know these guys, but I model people or I made friends with people. John, John Benson, uh, Tyler Bramlett. I, I just made friends with a lot of people. I used to fly from Houston to events. I learned this from one of my mentors. I was in a coaching, and Craig Ballantyne, he's the godfather of the internet. He was the guy kind of in the beginning that started all this money making online. Uh, look him up. He's a great guy. Um, he says, Wesley, I know you want things to happen for you, but you really got to go out there and meet people. I know you're emailing them, but you got to go meet people, buddy. And he has a, um, he has a, um, a seminar that he does every year, uh, the TT Summit that he does with Pedro's, the guy that owns Fit Body Bootcamp, uh, great friends of mine. Um, I suggest anybody in the Indian business, you need to go there because you're going to meet the people that one that's going to promote your product. So when my product was ready, I kindly emailed these people, which they liked me because they like my drive, they like my ambition, they like my fire, and they like to slap my chest like this, right? But they emailed for me. And um, when they emailed for me, it blew up. And he told his friend, that told his friend, that told his friend, and it was done. That was all she wrote. Millions of dollars later, um, we had a company that was, uh, last year we did about $15 million. Okay. Um, hold on. Let me see. Let's go back. Hope that's a good question, um, Lim Nguyen. Chris Hurd, do you have a purpose statement for your business? If so, what role has that played in your company success? So, I'm going to be honest, Chris. I don't really have a Mission statement, you know, something that I repeat verbatim. Um, <clears throat> this one thing that I do practice in business, and sometimes this is, you know, it rubs people the wrong way, but I focus on the money, okay? This is my job as the CEO of many of all my companies. My job is to be the visionary, and it's to focus on to make sure that we have new money coming into the business. That's my mission statement. Thou shalt make money. That's it. I have customer service people that work for me. I got people that create products work for me. I got people that write copy that work for me. That's their job. My job is to make sure I'm bringing in the money. That's it. Because guess what? If I'm not focusing on the money, then I can't pay the people, right? I can't pay them any money. If I'm working on VSLs, if I'm working on articles, and no. My mission statement is I must focus on the money money new money must be coming into my business every day i must be out there looking and attracting new opportunities to make more money that's it this is my role in life period so that's my mission statement i think everybody that's a ceo you guys are learning it from you ought to research this guy his name is dan kennedy he's one of the greatest copywriters on the internet but he speaks more about wealth, and, he's and he talks about and he talks about it on a deep level that I think a lot of people uh, need to check out. He has a video called Wealth Attraction, and he taught me some things about money that a lot of business people, they don't focus on the money. They focus on everything else, right? Like the keyboards and, uh, oh, we got to buy a new mouse and new laptops. What? No, no, no. You have to make sure. Like every day I have my assistant or my manager, she sends me how much money that we're making for the day three times a day eight o'clock in the morning twelve o'clock and five o'clock because i have to make sure the business owner that we're always making money think about it if you had investors that was investing in your business the only thing they care about at the end of the day is are they making a profit period they don't care about the layoffs they don't care about what people are upset man no no they want to know are we making a profit you as the ceo of your business that's all you need to worry about. That's your business statement, okay? All right. Um, Ryan, 
when you wrote, man, guys, thank you so much. I love this, man. I'm having fun. Like I said, guys, I stay on it as long as you want me to. I'm here for you. Just please hit like and share this video right now, please. If you don't, please hit like right now. Three, two, one, like, share. Thank you. That's much love for me. That's a payment to me. Uh, when you wrote your first winning offer, how did you know it was a winner? Like with Fat Diminisher, did you know it was really that good? I did. Um, you know, <clears throat> and I don't know if it was a gut feeling, but do you know, like sometimes when you do something in life and you just know it's going to work out, it's kind of like when you go on an interview to a job and you just feel like, man, I got that job, right? I think everybody experienced that one time in their life. Uh, when I wrote that copy, I knew it. I mean, I knew it was going to be good. I didn't know it was going to be number one. But years ago, I said I was going to be number one. I said I'm going to dwarf Vinny's factor. People laughed at me, guys. They said, man, how are you going to diminish Venus factor when you're number 6,000 in your network right now? My gravity score is by two out on three. And I said, I'm going to beat them. I don't know how, but I will be number one. I said that years ago. When I wrote the copy, I knew this was it. I felt it. Okay, it was a gut feeling. I just knew it. And I meditated on so much, and what I would start doing, I would meditate on the success. Does that make sense? I was visualizing the success already happening. Does it make sense? Because remember, your body doesn't know when something good or bad is happening. A signal from your mind tells your body, is this a good feeling or a bad feeling? So I was creating the experience in my head. So my body or my brain didn't know this wasn't happening in the outer physical world. But in my brain, in my body, it felt, it felt like it was happening. So I created that over and over and over and over and over again. I was meditating three times a day on the success that you're seeing right now. The cars, the houses, the, the apartments, the, the traveling around the world. I meditated on that every single day for a long time okay and you should do the same al salas my boy interesting that you said what do you what do i want this is to mean to me i can see the difference in thinking awesome um al salas who was the mentor that has the 100 products you mentioned to help you um <laughs> i don't know if i can say his name um let's just say it's a young man by the age of me, 31, I'm 36. Um, he lives in Romania. I'm not going to say his name. I um, just don't have permission to do that. He's a good friend of mine. He's really low key. Guy. He's a low key guy. Um, but he makes about $90,000 to $100,000 a day net. Um, he has partners, but he makes a lot of money. So, this young guy from Romania, well, what I liked about him, um, he's a business person. Uh, a lot of people in the internet business, they get a little bit emotional. He doesn't have emotionals. I mean, you don't, he knows how to disconnect his emotions from his business. That makes sense? And I like that about him. And I have the same thing how I run my business. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I have to take care of me and my family. So how I feel about a person, you could be my friend or you can do this, but if it's not the best decision for me and my business and my family, I'm not going to go that way. A lot of people don't do business that way because they care about people a lot. And I care, but... I have to make a business decision that's going to take care of me and my family, right? At the end of the day, that's how it works. So, uh, yeah, yeah, he's a Romanian guy, 31. He does it very well. Very nice guy, but very shrewd businessman. I love him. Uh, Meditation success. Okay. Right, Sean, you got to see the end results. My boy, Jeff Braxton, I knew he was. See, guess what? Everybody that's up right now, it's 1144 here in Houston, Texas. But these are the dreamers, man. You got 29 people watching this video right now, 26 now. But you'll see how many people are, that are interested in this type of information. How many people that really want to talk to a live millionaire that I'm going to give you the tools, you know, every night as much as possible to get you to reach your gain. And guess what? It's going to happen for you. I promise you, it's going to happen. Trust me. How did you balance relationships on your way to the top? In other words, did you have a girlfriend? Were you married? Or did you just remain single? Oh, man, you know, that's a great question, Jeff. Now, <clears throat> I talked about this in another video. And I'm going to be honest with you. This is what I did. Now, I'm not saying that everybody else needs to do this. But for a year and a half, I didn't have any sex. Got quiet, huh? For one year and a half, I didn't have any type of sexual contact with any woman 
I was single. I was by myself. And I didn't have any sex. And let me tell you why. And about the balance thing, there's no balance, guys. I'll tell you that. If you're looking for balance, you might as well stay, stay at your job, stay at your nine to five jobs, um, uh, stay doing what you're doing. Because when you're trying to become a millionaire, okay, very wealthy in life, and create the lifestyles that a lot of people have that you envision, um, there's no balance. There was many times I couldn't go see my kids, no balance. Uh, I couldn't hang out with friends. I wasn't having sex at all. Because the amount of focus that it takes. This is what a lot of people don't understand. Like, oh, you need balance in life. Shut up. People that say that they need balance is people that are not rich. Does that make sense? But see, right now, I can, I, I can afford balance. Does that make sense? Right now, I can have fun with my children every day if I wanted to. Right? This summer... I'm getting me a condo in Florida, and my kids, we all flying out there, and we're going to chill out the entire three months in Florida, in Miami, okay? And plus, we'll travel to some other country around the globe, only because of the imbalance that I had before. Does that make sense? I wasn't balanced, guys. But now, I can afford to balance. So to answer your question, no, it's no balance, man. You might as well have a conversation with your family right now and say, baby, I'm going to become a seven-figure owner. I'm going to become a millionaire. I'm about to become a millionaire. And baby, I'm going to need you to support me. I'm not going to be there all the time. It's going to be time that I'm going to be a little disconnected because I'm working on my goal. I probably can't be at every meet, every baseball game. You talk to your kids. You make a deal with them. Because that's what I did for my kids. I said, you know what, babies, I can't be there 100% right now. If you desperately need me, I'll be there. But the great thing about my kids, and I love them so much because they gave dad that space. And now my kids get whatever they want and they deserve it. My kids just brought back their report cards. They made all A's, both of them. You know why? And you, know, you know why I think why my kids do well in school? Because they're happy. They're happy. See, most people, even kids... They do well in school when they're happy at home and they got a happy life. 